Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be going over my um, money diversification or investment portfolio, as you can call it, I guess. Um, although I do have most of my money in a bank account, which I wouldn't really consider an investment because it technically uh, depreciates as you, have, as you have your money uh, sit in it, obviously, with inflation. But, um, you know, there there's just kind of some limits to where I can put my money right now since I am an 18-year-old. And I, you know, I can't contribute over my contribution limit for my tax-free savings account, which is an account here in Canada. If you're not from Canada and not familiar with it, um, it's similar to like a Roth IRA, but basically you can't put more than six thousand dollars per year in, uh, in the account, or else you get like penalized. Um, so I, I can only put six thousand dollars for this year, and then in 2022 I can put in another six thousand dollars or whatever the new contribution limit will be for the next following year. Um, but anyways, so the first type of investment is the bank account, which is an investment as I explained, but um, it's five thousand or $55,266.70 is what I currently have uh, sitting in there losing value. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a, I'm not too worried about it because, you know, it, there's not much I can do right now. And I'm pretty proud of what I've been able to accomplish, accomplish in the last couple of years. Uh, most of this money is from working. I worked like full time for a year and a bit uh, during the pandemic. My work stayed open. So I, I continued to work full time while doing online school. You know, the workload did get tough at times, but I persevered through it and it was definitely worth it. Uh, I, and again, we we're in the pandemic, so I wasn't spending money on anything. I saved it all. And I also worked earlier before the pandemic, like part time. So I, I, and I saved most of that, too. So this really built up pretty quickly. Uh, you know, the pandemic, obviously, I wouldn't go through it again, but it happened now and I took advantage of it the best I could. And I think it was definitely worth it. It obviously sucks um, missing out on like a lot of things due to the pandemic, like sports and uh, like being able to go to school and see your friends and, and things like that. And I know like a lot, a lot of people weren't able to go to work, but I was fortunate enough to be put in an opportunity where I was able to. Uh, the next investment here now is my Wealth Simple Trade portfolio. So this is basically like a stock broker here in Canada, similar like to Robinhood in the States, commission free broker or trading platform. If you are from Canada, there's a link in the description where you can sign up and get the cash equivalent of uh, two free stocks when you open your account with the link in the, in the description. I also get a couple of free stocks as well. It helps me out. It helps you out. You might as well take advantage of it if you're going to um, open up a, a TFSA, RRSP, or even like a personal trading account with Wealth Simple Trade, you might as well take advantage of it, whether it's it's with my link or someone else's link, but definitely take advantage and get the free starting bonus if you're going to invest with Wealth Simple Trade. But anyway, uh, I have a $5,000 in this account, $5,010.77 to be specific. Um, I actually put $5,050 into it so far, so it's depreciated like 40 bucks, but you know, I'm not too worried. I'm going to recognize it as the amount that it currently is, not what I put in. Like, same with the crypto. And as you see here, it's appreciated for me. Um, but I'm definitely happy with where my uh, Wealth Simple Trade portfolio is at because I, I know that it's going to rebound eventually. I, I uh, bought into blue chip companies, long term positions. So I'm really, really positive. I'm hoping at least that it's going to rebound if I just hold it for a couple of years, which I'm going to, I'm planning on holding these stocks I have for a couple of years at least. And probably some of them will, I hold forever. So, you know, it's pretty exciting what hopefully this can turn into over the next 20 years. And my next investment is a bit more of a volatile and risky one, which is why I don't, I only have, as you can see, if you look at this chart here, uh, I only have, 4% of my uh, money into crypto, which, you know, it, it's a decent amount. I wouldn't say it's a lot. I wouldn't say it's a little, but uh, it's definitely uh, an amount that I won't be, if it, like I pretend to, with crypto, I just pretend that it went to zero and I don't have any, I don't have that money anymore because, you know, it, it could go to zero. I, I'm pretty confident with the ones I invested in, which are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, if you're, um, if you're wondering or curious. This is not financial advice, though. Uh, do your own research before you buy any crypto or stocks. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty confident with them, but you know, I'm it's risky, so I'm gonna pretend that they went to zero already. And 
if they go to zero, then it won't be the end of the world. It's going to suck, but you know, I'll still have the other positions here. Hopefully I <laughs> uh, getting into my next one here. Or, oh, sorry. I'll go over my uh, crypto amount first. I have $2,767 in crypto and cryptocurrency. Uh, and of that, I put in 2500 and like $10 or something. I put in some weird amount like that. And it's appreciated a lot as crypto is very volatile. And luckily, I bought the dip. And a couple of days later, it like went up 5 or 6%, even more than that, I think. So, you know, it will prob I'll probably have to update this in a couple of days with a year going up more, going down more. Who knows? No one can really predict crypto. Um, but... I'm hoping it keeps on going up, but then again, I want to buy those uh, dips when it gets low. So I'm not going to complain either way. <laughs> uh, the next investment here is actually sports cards. I have $3,500 uh, in sports cards. I'm not really buying sports cards anymore. Uh, so if basically, if you don't know, you, sports cards are graded on a scale of 1 to 10. PSA is like a grading company. It's the one I always buy. Uh, it grades a card on the quality of the card. So if it has like a bent corner, it's going to get like a one. Or if it has like a scratch on it and it's like folded in half, it might not, it might not even get graded. Like it'll get like a 0.5 or something. But basically if it's in mint condition, you'll get a 10. Near mint condition, you'll get like a nine. That kind of grading skill. And I buy, buy great, these graded cards. Like I have Giannis Antetokounmpo rookie cards, PSA, like nines or whatever. And I have a bunch of rookie cards that are graded, and I'm just kind of holding them in the long term. I have sold most of this position, unfortunately. I, a couple of years ago, like in March 2020, I was really into this stuff right during right before the pandemic hit. And I bought a bunch of like Luka Doncic rookie cards, and I sold all those. I don't have any of them anymore. I kind of wish I held a couple, but it went it doubled or tripled in price by the time like the playoffs came around. So I I, I just sold them. I bought like 30 of them. So get rid of those while I could. I, a 3x profit but sports cards if you guys are looking into that i'm not sure how the market's doing I'm, i don't follow it too much anymore but it was a great way of making money i just sold them on ebay and now i, I just kind of hold the long-term ones that i have like the older retired players and i have a couple players i really believe in like Giannis onto the cupo and some um, like i have kevin durant as well and i have a couple other guys but I'm mostly focused on basketball and you can also do this like Pokemon cards. I know that one's really popular. So if sports isn't your thing. Pokemon kind of has the same thing. Like the PSA will grade it on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best condition possible. And uh, yeah, you can kind of flip. I'm not too knowledgeable about Pokemon by any means, but that's definitely another viable way of uh, flipping cards. Uh, I know Pokemon's really, really blown up in the last couple of years along with sports cards as well. Pokemon probably was even more of a uh, dramatic jump in price to be honest then we have miscellaneous uh, i have thirty five hundred dollars in miscellaneous things as well it's, it's kind of i kind of lowballed this one a little bit because i'm not going to include like every single thing i own like but uh like I, I include things like my gaming consoles like my ps5 my pc and things like that um i just included those things and a couple other big things that i own i own that are so, you know, some sort of value that I don't see going down. If they do go down, it'll be a little bit, you know, obviously a PS5 won't be as much in a couple of years, but you'll still be able to sell it for something. So I kind of uh, just lowballed this one a little bit because it will depreciate over time for sure, the value of this miscellaneous. So that's probably a pretty accurate uh, amount. Anyways, that's kind of where I have my $70,000 diversified um, over my portfolio. Uh, if you guys are interested in the channel, I make videos following along my investment journey. I'm an 18 year old Canadian. So you guys can basically see from right when I turned 18 up until hopefully a couple of years down the line when I'm like 25 and you'll see kind of my portfolio building and building, gaining a snowball and com compounding effect. And you'll see the numbers now in a couple of years, you'll, you'll follow the whole journey and you'll see where I end up. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's uh, pretty big in a couple of years. Uh, compared to what it is now but you know we'll see we'll see where this turns out um thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video and peace out